Good morning all my friends and all you humans too. When I say my friends, I'm referring to dogs. Right, Diesel? All dogs are friends. Not all humans are friends. That's a fact. What do you got hanging here? You got, you got something in your eye. A little hair there, I got that. Welcome to the vlog. Uh, we make daily videos every day, traveling across Canada and the United States in our truck, and also when we're at home. So uh, if you haven't already, and if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. We have new videos almost every day. We've been making videos for quite a while. I've been driving trucks since 2006. It's now 2019, if you were unaware. It's almost 2020. It's not crazy, 2020. Wow. It's also almost Christmas, right? Yesterday, at the end of yesterday's vlog, I, I I mentioned that uh, this coming weekend, or this past weekend, if you're watching it, was Veterans Day or Remembrance Day. Uh, so now we can officially start putting up Christmas decorations, right? That's the rule. No Christmas decorations before Remembrance Day. And in the US, I understand, I understand, before you start typing, I can hear your clicking, your fingers clicking already on the keyboard. Don't break your keyboard. I understand in the US, you guys celebrate Thanksgiving in November for some reason. We celebrate our Thanksgiving in Canada the exact same as you guys. We celebrate it a month early in October to make more room for Christmas. All right? Okay, so after Remember Say Veterans Day, we go full on into Christmas mode. At least I do. Maybe not everybody, but. So uh, in the US, you guys still have to wait for Thanksgiving. So, ha. Enjoy your Thanksgiving, though. Have some turkey for me. <sighs> Today, we're in Clearwater, Minnesota and we're headed home. About five and a half hours to the Canadian border and another hour and a half back to our yard. We should be back this evening sometime. Hopefully, excuse me. Oh, oh, I've been fighting that yawn this whole clip. It came out anyway. How many of you yawned? We're, uh, we're headed home for a couple of days anyways. Uh, uh, we have uh, some fertility appointments and stuff. And uh, you know, my wife and I, Britt and I are uh, trying our best to have kids and uh, we've had some difficulty some fertility issues um we figured out what the problem is we think and uh, we're working with it uh, apparently it's me I'm not infertile but uh, how can I say this in a family friendly Way. Okay, don't worry. I'm gonna. I, I'll use code words. So uh, my guys, only 10% of my guys that should reach the finish line are getting there, apparently. So 90% uh, of them aren't getting to the finish line where they need to be. So it's not that I don't have enough guys. It's just that the guys are lazy, apparently, and uh, not very good at swimming. So, the doctor's working with, with us on that, and there are options that we can do to sort of, uh, you know, take my guys and drop them off at the finish line, and, uh, or uh, as the doctor put it, apparently we can give them an elevator ride so that they don't have to take the stairs. But uh, either way, like it, it doesn't prevent us from having children, but it, it's it's good to know where the issue is so that we can work with it and fix it from there so with everything that's going on uh it's very likely that she will be pregnant in the next few months let's hope we're, we're hoping and praying for a good healthy baby and you know uh, with these fertility treatments that we take you know there's, there's a very high chance that we could even have twins and i think Britt and i would both be very happy with that we'd be very very cool and uh you know if if my kids one day are looking back on this video <laughs> when they're old enough to understand what's going on. We worked very hard for you. We wanted you very badly. And we are desperately waiting for you. And uh, you're going to be so loved and cherished when you do finally come because uh, we want you more than anything. Can't wait. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. We're working. We're working towards it. And things are uh, looking good. There, there's. It, it doesn't look bad. It, it's. It's gonna happen. So that's a little update on that. 
Anyways, let's do some trucking today, right? That's probably why you clicked on the video. Let's uh, do some trucking. So I'm waiting for my border clearance to come through. I still haven't heard anything. I called in to confirm that they got my car stickers and all my paperwork, and it, it got there. They're just waiting to get cleared. There's three shipments on my load, so three separate PARS stickers. What a PARS is, for those of you who don't know, it's like a, it's like an identification number and barcode uh, that registers with the customs. So that when you show up to the border, they just scan it and they know exactly you know, who you are, where you're going, where you came from, what your freight is, all the details of the freight, and then it gets cleared to cross the border into the next country. So to come into the States, it's a PAPS. Go into Canada, it's PARS. I'm still waiting on two of them to clear. One of them had cleared already, but two of my shipments are still waiting. We're about three and a half hours away from the border, so hopefully in that time, oh, they'll get everything ready to go. So when I get there, there's no delay. Looks like I'll be arriving there around 3.30 in the afternoon. I gotta stop for fuel yet, so it'll probably end up being closer to four o'clock. So they, they got some time yet. We're in Minnesota here still. We're getting close to the border with North Dakota. Got about 60 miles or so to go. But the, the land is starting to clear out. You know, as soon as you get over the Red River, into North Dakota, that's when the prairies, or the plains as the Americans call them, the plains start. And then it's nothing but fields and farmers all the way to the coast. <laughs> or all the way to the Rockies, I should say. It's amazing how much farmland is in the heart of the continent. There's tons, way more than we need for ourselves. Like, I'm sure that the, the I'd call it the breadbasket of North America, stretching from the Canadian prairies all the way down to Texas. Like, I'm sure that, that these farmers feed a huge chunk of the world. It's just endless. On and on and on. Just farmers, farmers, farmers. Growing our food. Rolling into the megaopolis, megatropolis, mega city of Fargo, North Dakota. I believe this is actually West Fargo. I think it's a different, I don't know. I'm just gonna pull into the the Petro here and uh, check out the lineup at the Blue Beacon. See how long of a lineup it is right now. I'm guessing it's kind of long, but if it's a short lineup, hey, I'm gonna go and get a truck wash. But I don't wanna spend an hour or two here waiting in line on my way home. So we'll see how long that lineup is. Make our decision then. I'd like to have the truck clean. Because once I get into Canada, there's not very many good Blue Beacon type truck washes, you know? Blue Beacon's so nice and convenient. And there's only a couple of uh, locations and they're in Eastern Canada, of course. You know, I don't know if the Blue Beacon executives watch my videos. Chances are probably no. But by the off chance, if one of you know one of them, maybe you can tell them that, hey, it would be great to create a network of Blue Beacons in Western Canada. I think they would do well. That tanker had a lot of problems getting around that corner. Why were you in the inside lane, bud? You have a trailer. You should be in the outside lane when making a corner. <laughs> now well. All right, let's go in here. Let's see what's going on. Well, let's see what's going on. What's the, what's the lineup look like? You can't tell from back here, really. Come with me before you know that the the entrance is right over here but i don't want to go back there and find out there's like 10 trucks in line i think that tanker's gonna go in there shoot yeah i'm gonna let him go in front of me ah now oh well i want to go around here and see how long the lineup is shoot well the tanker's gonna be in front of me now okay so off to the right you'll see the lineup there's one two three four 
five, six trucks or so in front of me, plus that tanker. Uh, a little bit of a long lineup. A little bit of a long lineup. They do have both bays open. Oh, what's this guy doing parked here on the left, just blocking everything in? Looks like he just got a truck wash and he's just blocking everything. Just sitting there, yep. Just sitting there doing nothing. I made my decision. I'm gonna go wait in line. What's this guy doing? Nice tractor. I am turning left, my friend. That's not the exit, but I'm sure he'll figure it out. Oh wait, the entrance isn't here. Oh, no, the entrance is over here. Okay, never mind. Okay, so I sat there and waited for nothing. Okay. They always make these blue beacon entrances so, in, so like, you can't get out of it. Once you line up, you're lined up. Like, you're in. You can't just back out. Once you decide to wait, doesn't matter how long it takes, you gotta wait. So here we go. We're in line now. One, two, three. Well, that guy just hasn't moved up. Also, it looks like there's a lot more people in line, but the one truck is just not moving up. Okay. Oh, because there's a pickup in front of them. Really, a pickup? Why would you go through the automatic car wash at the gas station? Why are you taking up a spot at the big rig truck wash? Oh well. Could have been in front of this tanker if I would have just gone up the line. So one, two, three, four, five people in front of me. I guess we'll see. See how long this lineup takes. Well, they're just rinsing her off. And we gotta wait for the guy who parked in front of there to move. Looks like he's moving now. As soon as there's space there, he's gonna open the door for me and that'll be that. Got my usual truck wash, the conventional wash plus the undercarriage, the motor, uh, and Rainex. Comes out to about 80 bucks American. Just over 100 bucks Canadian. Thank you. And the wash itself only took, well, less than 10 minutes. I waited in line half an hour and I was probably, yeah, under 10 minutes to wash the truck. So that's why I like Blue Beacons, right? Because they have the guys to do it quickly. And you don't gotta do it yourself. Because if I do it myself, it takes a very long time. It takes like an hour to properly wash my truck. And these guys can do it in 10 minutes. They have all the proper equipment and stuff, right? So, anyway, we're just gonna let the Rain-X and the wind dry the truck. I don't wanna use my wipers now, otherwise that Rain-X stuff gets all over my wipers. And then my wipers don't wanna wipe properly. but I'll let the wind just push these water beads off the off the windshield on the highway. We're gonna stop in Grand Forks for fuel yet. So we're not finished buying stuff yet. We still gotta buy a few hundred dollars worth of fuel today yet. You know, if this was, if we ever start driving electric trucks, I wonder how they're going to charge us for that and how expensive will it be to charge up the truck, you know? If they can get me a full charge that can last me 500 miles pulling my gross vehicle weight, like a full weight, they can get me charged in like 15 minutes. Wonder how much that would cost. Come on, give me some of that cheap American juice. Uh-huh.